Last glacial maximum. What is the last glacial maximum or LGM, the term commonly used in glacier science? What does it mean if there were other glacier periods in the past like that? Let's talk about that. Right now we experience the interglacial period between previous cooling event or ice age we call it and the future one. And in between, we have this time when the planet a little bit warm up, glaciers retreated up into the mountains, some of them disappeared, some ice caps disappeared, some ice sheets as well melted away or disappeared or stayed there but just become smaller or thinner. And then the next cool event will come on the planet and it will start all over again advancing glaciers down the valleys. The scientists know that extensive glaciers and ice sheets existed in the recent geological past and has been recognized since the middle 19th century. Since then, scientists developing glacier chronologies, we call glacier chronologies, the chronologies where and how far glaciers advanced in the past in particular places of the world. And about for the hundred years or so, scientists developing those chronologies and only recently we start to put the dates on those glaciations the modern technologies allow us to date differently those deposits or other evidence of the glaciers' presence in the valleys or on the land. And now we can more or less securely say when the glaciers were in particular place and how long it stayed there. Since 1960s, radiocarbon dating has been used to constrain the timing of recent glacial events. We're talking about last 40,000 years. Although this technique depends on location, suitable organic material, it's not always uh, correct, but still scientists date a lot of deposits, cross-checking, cross-correlating, and we have more or less approximate dates for particular deposits. These chronologies have been revolutionized in the first decades of the 20th century, also by new cosmogenic radionuclide method, and also optically stimulated luminescence dating. These techniques date the duration of the surface exposure and the age of sediment burial and allow us to place glacial chronologies on an absolute time scale. And we can correlate it with other data from marine and ice core records. Thus today we have quite secure data from particular oxygen isotope ratios in marine sediments and also from the ice cores in Antarctica and Greenland. Marine isotopes record provide a benchmark chronology for the quaternary period. Thus, we can kind of look in the last two million years or so up to present time and see quite detailed record of fluctuation of those isotopes. Thus, these marine isotope stages, we called MIS, number back from the present till past with cold periods assigned to even numbers and warm periods to odd numbers. The current warm period is assigned to be MIS-1 and the last period when there was a cool event, full glacier conditions, we called MIS-2 or last glacial maximum. All these periods are characterized by glaciation, but the location or extent of the ice sheets will vary. When this correlate these changes since the onset of the ice sheet glaciation in the early Eocene to the obliquity cycles about 40,000 years. Watch my video about the Milankovitch cycles. Around 800 to 900,000 years ago, the dominant wellness of climate cycles switched to approximately 100,000 years, close to eccentricity cycles. Scientists argued why one cycle is more dominated than others in particular time. And the many scientists suggested this it's not a straightforward correlation between the cycles and the climate response on the planet, so it's more non-linear dependencies in the Earth system reacting to these changes in our astronomical cycles. Thus we can say that a late Cenozoic glaciations come early in Antarctica. And scientists suggested that Antarctica was under the ice throughout the Cenozoic period and the ice sheet started growing after the eocene oligocene boundary about 34 million years ago. Antarctic ice sheet extended and retreated several times until the middle Miocene climate optimum 
at about 14 to 10 million years ago. And after that, the ice sheet became permanent around Antarctica, and that's what we're observing today. During the LGM, the last glacial maximum, which happened according to the old data on our planet about 20,000 years ago, the ice is extended close to the edge of the continental shelf. Since then, we can note that Antarctica ice sheet right now melting down and some ice start retreating up into the valleys, into the middle of the continent. Similar we can observe around the Northern Hemisphere. However, the, the recent data show that the Northern Hemisphere glaciation started about 3.2 million years ago. The largest sheet around the Northern Hemisphere is Laurentide Ice Sheet, which is maximum extent covered large parts of Northern North America. At the glacial maximum, the Laurentide Ice Sheet confluent with the Calderian Ice Sheet at the west of the North America and the Inutian Ice Sheet in the north. When the cold periods are less extended, less severe, those sheets are separated and behave independently. During the last glacier maximum, which we found out was about 20,000 years ago, the peak of it, Calderanian ice sheet extended from the Puget lowlands in Washington state to the western tip of the Aleutian Islands. At this time, the Inuchid ice sheet covered the Canadian Arctic archipelago and was composed of the Alpine sector to the east and lowland sector to the west. The Greenland ice sheet also expanded over the surrounding continental shelf during the LGM or last glacier period. But unlike the North American ice sheets, it's preserved throughout some, but perhaps not all, interglacier periods. We have some evidence that Greenland ice sheet was the smallest in the last interglacial period, about 125,000 years ago, and there was uh, much less ice there than at the present moment. Similar like 20,000 years ago in the LGM, last glacier period, large ice sheet developed over the Eurasia on several occasions during the last several million years. At the maximum extent, Eurasian ice sheet extended from Ireland in the west to Nova Zimbla in the east and Svalbard in the north. Southern areas' margins lay through England, Netherlands, Denmark, northern Germany, Poland and Russia. Northern parts of this ice sheet grew down below the modern level of the sea in the Barents and Kara Seas. It was kind of similar to the present with Antarctica ice sheet. You can imagine that the periods when we have a last glacier maximum, that's the periods when the sea level is the lowest, because majority of the water been trapped as a ice on the ice peaks. Therefore, it explains how ice sheets can go further down, down to the continental shelf, outside of the modern margins of the ocean, because the time ocean was much lower. In many places, the continental shelf around the continents was exposed and was connecting the continents. For example, where now we see the Bering Sea, in the last glacier maximum, there was a land connecting North America and Asia. One of the suggestions how the people, first humans, moved from Asia to North and South America. When there was a other glacier maximum periods, the European Alps as well were covered under the ice and this ice sheet grew further and then it met the northern ice sheet around the Germany, Poland and they sometime joined together. There's a big ice sheet developed over the Tibet and Himalaya and have a major influence on the global climate. However, some data using the modern technologies of dating suggested that during the last quaternary glaciations, the expansion of the local glaciers in that area in many cases extended only a few kilometers from the present position. And as demonstrated, Tibetan ice sheet have been existed during at least the last few full glacier cycles, and kind of in a similar extent as it now. Similar glaciations were observed around South America, Patagonia. There was a big glaciation along Andean Mountains, a developer ice sheet. And the most extensive glaciation occurred in Quaternary in southern South America, about 1.1 million years ago. 
We also observe the glaciation around Southern Alps in New Zealand. We know that still glaciers persist around New Zealand, they're melting away rapidly. However, in LGM, those glaciers cover majority of the South Island. And the small ice masses develop in places North Island of New Zealand, Tasmania and New Guinea. People finding some evidence of some glaciers even being preserved in LGM around Australia. Therefore, you can see that in the last glacial maximum period, about 20,000 years ago, not only the Europe, but also the other parts of the world were affected. Climate on the planet was different. And it was not just causing the glaciers going down the valleys, but it's also changing the sea level, changing the vegetation on the planet, forests disappearing, alpine areas increasing, cold temperatures around, the air become drier, less moisture, and there was a lot of cold winds coming from the big ice sheets down the valleys. Therefore, everybody was affected by that. And one of the reasons scientists suggested that the humans developed so fast, which happened during the last 10,000 years, was caused by last glacier maximum, when people have to fight through the glacial period, think more and develop different behavior which caused us to develop the civilization on our planet. That's one of the theories, at least. Therefore, we can surely say it that although there's so many glacier to glacier periods and there's a many smaller in between, re advances of the glacier when small cool events happened, even during the last 20,000 years ago, we have at least three confirmed cooling events which occurred globally. Therefore, we know in the general scale, 20,000 years ago, there was the coolest moment on our planet. Since then, we're gradually moving towards the warmer period. Therefore, we call it interglacier period. This is just a brief overview of last glacier maximum period on our planet, how we know that it's occurred, how it's affected our planet, all its part. And we talk more about glaciation, continuing glaciation, glaciation on our planet, and this effect on environment and people in the future videos.